One of the great things about When We Speak is that it allows me the opportunity to meet great singers and artists that I normally wouldn't meet, like Elle Renee of Detroit. And while she was in Atlanta, I got a chance to speak with her. What's the word today? The word Bring today? to life what you say when we speak. Molten Nahiwat, when we last it, Nacho. It happens in time, it happens in the time. new age sublime, when, when we speak. When we speak. Clean, crystal Clean crystal black, black. life all won't last. Death and life when we are in the power of the time. Got a real for you, understand more the truth when, when we speak. speak. When we speak. You are looking good. Thank you. Get your little much. leopard print on and, you know, tigered out. I guess. Right. No, but not tiger. Really. Not cool. <laughs> leopard. A leopard is a leopard. As, not as a, long as you uh, didn't say cougar, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're too young to be a cougar. That's right. <laughs> well, look, look, let's jump right into it. Okay. You have a slogan that you say non stop, non pop, right? right? I Can do. you explain what that means? Well, basically, when I started that slogan, um, I was trying to establish myself as an artist that made good music. Uh -huh. I felt at the time that music was missing that that longevity piece. Okay. And usually that has been pop music. Mm -hmm. So that's where nonstop non pop came from. I mean it's nothing really spectacular. Uh -huh. But that that is, that is it. Um at the time I was I was I was wanting music that I would be able to listen to fifteen, twenty years from now. So yeah, mm -hmm. I, I would like to think that I would I would be among one of the artists that people think of when they are older and their grandkids uh -huh. are listening to music and they get to say, you don't know nothing about that. <laughs> yes. That's but you what know I'm about that be, right. right. So non-stop, non-pop. Okay. So it really doesn't have anything to do with you saying that you're against pop music. Oh, absolutely like not. No, okay. not at all. Okay. Because, you know, when I first heard it, I was like, so does that mean that if she had an opportunity for pop music, she would never do it? No, that is not what it means okay. at all. It just means music that is primarily against the grain. Okay. Meaning, it, it it's good music. It may not come on the radio every five to ten minutes, but it's very good. Okay. That's what it means. Okay. Yeah. Now, we know that you sing background also. Not yes. only are you a solo singer, you're a background singer also. I am. Now, why would a person who's so great, solo, Oh wow! Take a step into the background. Um, I think it ties into what I just spoke on in terms of the non-pop piece. Uh -huh. um, I really just want to be a part of great art, and in any way that I can support that, that's what I'll be. Okay. And I have an opportunity to really do that. I mean, for those of you of your listeners who may not know, I perform background for Kim. Right. The Universal Motown recording artist, and he makes that timeless music mm -hmm. that I think is important. And as an artist, I feel like it's our duty to make the best art that we can. And to be a part of that, if, if that means background, if that means carrying bags, uh -huh. if that whatever, whatever <laughs> is necessary, absolutely, absolutely, whatever it takes. Okay, and yeah, and everybody that's um, in the industry, I don't think gets that understanding you know it's all about me being out front me being out front when it takes a lot of skill and discipline yeah to be you it know does. in the background behind anyone you know mm -hmm. especially an artist as great as Kim you know <laughs> absolutely to be out front and to be yeah in the back yeah it really does well sometimes I like to um, solicit questions okay so I have a question for you you oh, ready wow. for it yes. I solicit it oh wow all right so let's, let's check do it, it. Out. Hey everybody, y'all all right? My name is John Patton and I have a question for El Renee. My question is, I'm interested in providing background and studio vocals, but I don't know about wages. Where can I find that information out? That is a very good question. Usually what happens is that if, depending on, well, first of all, let me say, music businesses starts with sales. Uh -huh. That's what drives it. So <laughs> any and everything is negotiable, okay? But if you want to find out what most people make, if they are working for a signed artist, I would highly recommend that you look for the union wages. Okay. It's, it's easy. You can Google it. And it'll tell you the union wages for everything. There's a union handbook, and then that can give you an idea of where to base 
your start from. But then more than anything else, um, this is some great advice that my father gave me when I first started working in the music business is that first you have to decide on what you want to make uh -huh. and then yeah. you set your own standard. Yeah. That's how it Because you know, even if it, I, well, the way I look at it, even if it's not what's standard. Exactly. It, maybe it's below. But if you're fine, Everybody's I mean, happy. It's yeah. when, when Most of us Who do cares? it anyway. Most exactly. of the time, that's what we do. We go to even if you go to a job. If you go right. to a nine to five job, they offer you a position for a particular price. You may you know at other companies people make a certain price, right. but if that fits your lifestyle and you can make that work, normally you just go with it. Exactly. Or yeah. even if it's higher, and then if yeah. you know, people have a tendency to value things that you know yeah. you don't want to. Make your you know you know you don't want to charge too less, yeah, but you don't want to charge too, charge too much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But either way it goes, if you're if you want to charge higher than what the standard rate is, then just rise to the the standard, rise to the excellence that's yeah. required, you know, for that to garner that. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> you know, I have a big question. Okay. I have always wanted to know how in the world do you prepare your personal life for oh, touring? <laughs> Because you don't. I just don't see how you do it. <laughs> well, um, it depends on your personality. Mm -hmm. I'm the type of person where I try to stay ready anyway. Okay. So I always have the basic necessities and then I just go. Mm -hmm. If but I forget home? something. I mean, like, how do you take care of home? Do you just say, okay, I'm gone? Or do you, wait, let me ask you a question. Do you have a pet? I do you have, have a cat, cat don't I you? I do. So, yeah. So, what's your cat's name? My cat's name is Kimmit. No, what I do you do him. with Kimmit when you, when it's time for you to go? I mean, what do you do? Well, depending on how long I'm going, I do have to have a sitter. Okay. Um, if it's two or three days, I hope this is not against anybody's rules. <laughs> Look, but don't but, say it in. Right. <laughs> okay, so we get a babysitter Yes, we get a babysitter for Kimmit. <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah. I mean, most of the time... <laughs> I'm in and out of town. Okay. I'm not gone consistently. So I haven't really had to prepare for something like that okay. before. The longest I've ever been gone were three months, and then I did have to have somebody okay. check in on my place and things like that. So, you know, you do what you got to do, whatever it takes. Do you ever get homesick? I get home. I get homesick for my Kemet, uh -huh. <laughs> my pet. I miss my, I miss my pet almost immediately, but... Um, I'm all about new experiences. I've been to South Africa. Like who? People don't normally do that. So I'm I'm excited. I love my job. There are long hours, but we play hard. Also, it's a lot of fun. Now, jumping back to your solo career. Mm -hmm. Now, like you said, you do background vocals for Kim. Right. And, you know, with Kim being at a level that can keep you busy forever and forever, you right. know, keep you working. Because sometimes you do background for people and they're doing one or two tours or shows, whatever. Mm -hmm. But being with an artist that um, can keep you booked mm -hmm. and working, how do you keep the attention of the El Renee supporters? Hmm. Well, you know what? I consider my supporters as you would say my family so it's just for me it's just the same as calling home and say hey ma how are you I'm to me I consider them a part of my family so checking in is easy and because they they give me the feedback that makes me feel that it's reciprocated um, for instance if I'm getting ready to get on a flight and it's early in the morning I may take a picture and say oh my god I'm so sleepy but here you go and my fans are right there with me, so yeah. So I guess social media is like a 
uh, your best friend. Huh? It's my best friend. <laughs> it's my best friend because sometimes it when you work really hard, sometimes it can be kind of lonely. But I don't. Whenever I have those feelings, I just reach out to somebody on social media, and like I said, they're like my family. So we just kind of kick it, so to speak. <laughs> okay. So what has been the the best thing that you've had uh, a supporter or a fan say to you? Oh, wow. It was more so what the person did. Okay. Um, I have someone in Japan. Mm -hmm. um, she purchased my album a couple of years ago and found out that I was going to be at the Macy's Jazz Festival. Okay. That's an annual event that goes on in Cincinnati every year. And she flew from Japan just to hear me sing background. Wow. Found a way to get in touch with Kim, got herself backstage, uh -huh. and she brought the two CD covers for the CDs that she purchased wow. to have me sign them. To me, that was the best. Okay. Because who travels thousands of miles to hear somebody sing background? Like, wow. You know, and it's hard to get someone to drive like 10 miles and come to shows. You know, so or five, to do that, sometimes and pay $5. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know it's the truth. You know it's the truth. I, look, I understand. Every, everyone who's been an independent artist yeah. understands that, understands yeah. what I just said. But to have someone years later she kept up with me on social media and to, yeah years later to fly all the way from japan just to say oh my gosh will you please sign my cd covers <laughs> blew my mind wow. that was that has been the best thing ever so far okay mm -hmm. so we have another question okay you ready cool. for it? and yes. her name is renee oh uh, hey renee <laughs> I'm Renee, I sing soprano, and I wanted to know some different techniques that I could use in order to perfect my lower range. Hmm, that's a good question also. Well, I train my voice mm -hmm. um, just to remain flexible, and it requires me to do vocal exercises that are for my lower range and upper range. You can find apps on, on um, like if you have an iPhone or something like that and just pick up one and just like when you're training physically you start and then don't stop little by little you'll notice that you have more and more control over your voice and then sometimes you push the limits just to see how far you can go but yeah you know but um, and I, I didn't mean to cut you off no, but it, no, like, it was going through my head because I wanted to ask you so that yeah it was when before I was before I got here I was preparing for okay. the interview and I kept debating if you were, what your range was. Ah. So, could you share that? Well, I've been told I'm a contralto. Okay. Because I, I, well, let me back up. Singing in high school and in college, I was always placed in first soprano because of my upper register. Okay. But I feel more comfortable singing alto. Okay. So... Yeah, and that's what I was wondering because I was like, okay, I've heard her go up. Yeah. But then I was like, but I and it's really not alto. even that high. It's just but I you just know, make some it people, sound high. Yeah, some people do it because I've I've even listened to some singers, mm -hmm. even Kim sometimes, mm -hmm. and I'm like, he's not really singing that high. It just sounds high because of the sound of his the voice. Resonant, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm like, placed. it's not really that high. It just right. sounds really high. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Thank you for that question, Renee. <laughs> did that make you think a little bit? It did make me think. I think I'm, like, like, what do I do? Like, what am I supposed to say to that? But really, I do have an app that I, I downloaded. Um, um, he's the vocal instructor that worked with Whitney Houston. Mm -hmm. Guy Rister, so um, has an app, huh? and I use it to what warm up my mean? voice. It it's a vocal. It's just vocal. So this is just walking through vocal warm-ups and exercises? It does. Is there someone physically singing or, I mean, how does that work? Well, it's not a person physically singing, but it does have the notes and you oh, follow okay. along with it. You say different vowel sounds and then you change the volume of it and it helps you gain control over your instrument. Okay. It's great. I highly recommend it. 